Hey guys, welcome to this brand new After Effects tutorial. I am Lyndon, and today we are going to be creating this really, really sweet dynamic car rig. Take a look at it. So everything works really well. We have the wheels rotating as we move it to the side. Um, you can even lift it up. Everything is completely automatic. It has a lot of cool features like the wheel doesn't rotate after it's off the ground. It even has reflections which I turned off because it slowed everything down too much. It's really cool. We can turn to full resolution to see the best quality. But anyway, it's, it's, it's really neat and expressions are the root of this. It's what makes everything automatic and expressions are really neat. Don't be afraid of expressions. Expressions are really awesome and they're not, they're not that hard. Being honest, they're not that hard. So let's go ahead and jump in and start creating this effect. Starting off, uh, I just you know Google a picture, get a car, and we just mask out the body. But it's a really rough mask. I mean, it just goes over nothing. I just did it in a minute or two. And what we can do is just um, add this key cleaner effect. So basically, it's key cleaner, and you just turn it on, and it just pretty much finds the edge, so you don't have to do a good job. And uh, yeah, that looks that works really cool. So next we need to create, uh, this is our body, so we'll rename this body, and uh, we'll duplicate this, and we'll make the first wheel. So we'll call this front wheel. So um, I gotta delete the mask and the key cleaner. And then we're gonna start creating this front wheel. So it's kinda hard to know where this edge is. Like, um, you can kinda turn the brightness up, you can try to find the edge. I think the best way to do it is just to find, go by the rim and then um, turn up the mask expansion so let's just try that let's try to um, go around the rim here and the rim is really concise and clear so it shouldn't be that hard to do this on the rim so there we go we have this mask going around the rim and we can turn that on turn that mask back on but then we gotta expand it to um, to, to have the entire tire entire tire cool so ex turn up the mask expansion there should be good We'll just do like, you know, a feather one or something. So cool. Alright, so we have a front wheel here. So we can basically rotate this wheel, except it rotates around this anchor point right here. So let's go ahead and move the anchor point. So we'll grab the pan behind tool and just grab it and move the anchor point to the center of the wheel. And uh, one cool thing we can do is, um, since this mask is centered, we can just double click on the mask and it shows where the center of the wheel is right there at that point. So it was about right here. So that should be pretty centered right there. So we can rotate it now and everything will work nicely. So we're going to just basically use the front wheel for the back too since the front wheel is better. So we'll duplicate this and call it back wheel. And this is going to work really cool. So let's just move it to the back here. And what you can do is just turn the opacity down to like 50 or so. And then just match it up to where it fits with the other uh, with the other rim so that's looking good we have both wheels and they are separate from the body so what we can do is um, attach them to the body we just um, parent them to the body so when, wherever we move the body the wheel also moves but they still are separate objects we can rotate the wheel without rotating the rest of the body or whatever alright so now when the body rotates it needs to rotate around the back wheel so let's go ahead and move that anchor, po anchor point to make it or you can just grab the uh, pan behind tool and move it to the right where we want it so just you know about there didn't have to be perfect so next thing we need to do is start uh, we can add our car controller and this is going to control the whole um, the whole rig you can right click and make a new null object but the best way to do it is to hold shift control alternate y all three of the keys and hit y and that's a much faster way of doing it. always do that way all right we're gonna name this uh, car controller all right, so the first thing we're going to do with this car controller is to separate its position dimensions. And that's going to make it a lot easier to access, you know, the different coordinates. Same thing for the body. We're going to right click and hit separate dimensions. So we have the X position and Y position. So now the body needs to follow the car controller X position. So we're going to add a expression to the um, body X position. And then we're going to attach it to the car controller X position. So I hope you understood that. So if we move the uh, car controller up and down, it doesn't affect it. But if we move the X position, then it does affect the, the body's position. But now the car controller is not in the right spot. It needs to be in the front wheel. So basically, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do plus value. And what that does is allows us to add a custom value. So plus value. And this is the value. If you click on it, that's the value right there. 
So we hit zero, the value equals zero, so it's plus zero. So we're just gonna make the val um, the value bigger till until the null object is in the right place. So right about there looks good. So now we can move the car controller, and it moves the car um, body around. So the next thing to do is to make the wheels turn. So we're gonna access the um, rotation for the front wheel. We'll do the front wheel first. So we're gonna add expression to it. So essentially, this is what we need to think about. All right. As we move the car controller in the X position, in the wheel needs to rotate. So we'll attach, attach the rotation to the car controller X position. So now the value of the rotation is equal to the X position. So that means that the wheel has rotated 578 degrees since the rotation is equal to the X position. So 578 degrees. Well, the problem is it may not be rotating at the right rate. See, it's, uh, here it's just rotating too fast. It's rotating way too fast. We'll put it in. We'll put it in half quality so you can see it's rotating far too fast so how do we fix that well first we need to know how how much does the wheel need to rotate alright so the front wheel needs to do one rotation after every time the car controller moves the length of its circumference the circumference is like the length around the edge of the circle like its perimeter of. so if the circumference was I don't know 100 pixels then it needs to do one rotation every time we move 100 pixels since that's the circumference I'll, I'll explain it once more the front wheel needs to do one rotation every time the car controller moves the length of the circumference alright so I hope that makes sense I really do alright so now what is the length of the circumference well we gotta figure that out here's a cool technique to do for doing that. Um, we're going to create a solid. Um, we're just going to scale down the solid. And we're going to scale it down to the to the diameter of the wheel. So the diameter of the wheel is about right there. The height of this gray solid is equal to the diameter of the wheel. Well what is the height of the gray solid? Well here's a cool trick. You can right click on the scale, hit edit value. Instead of doing percentage we can go to pixels. All right. It says that the height of this wheel is 240 pixels. Okay, so we'll copy that. 240, all right? So the diameter of this wheel is 240. So if you bring your calculator out, there's a really easy way to figure out the circumference of the wheel if you know the diameter. All right, so if you take the diameter, um, we'll paste it in here, and if we multiply that times pi, we get the circumference. So diameter times pi equals the circumference. So that's not hard. So the pi button is right here, or it's 3.14159635, you know, it goes on. So diameter times pi equals the circumference. So now we have the circumference. It's about four, um, 754. 754. All right, so remember that, 754. So let's go ahead and put 754 in the car controller X position. So 754. So by now, the wheel should have done one rotation because that's the length of the circumference. But instead, it's already done two and even more rotations. So the value of this rotation is 754. So we'll go ahead and divide that by 754. So divided by 754. So now, by the time we move 754 pixels, it's only done one degree of rotation. But we don't want it to do one degree. We want it to do 360 degrees because 360 degrees is one rotation. So we'll do times 360. So now the front wheel will rotate 360 degrees every time we move the X position, the length of the circumference. <laughs> Alright, so now that's works. So the wheel um, um, turns at a actually perfect rate. I mean, it's maybe slight error, but essentially it's perfect. We're going to copy this uh, expression to the other wheel. So hit Control C and we're going to paste it. Um, we're going to paste it on the rotation of the other wheel. So I hold Alt, add an expression, and then we'll paste it. Good job. So I hope you understood that math. Um, it's not that hard. Maybe I didn't explain it so good, but you know, you can just think about it and maybe kind of figure it out yourself. All right, looking good, looking good. So now what we need to do is make the car rotate towards the controller. All right, so if you lift the controller up, the car needs to rotate up. And so that will be the body rotation. And we set the anchor point just in the right spot so that when we rotate it, it rotates right off the back wheel so good so we need to add, a, add an expression to the um, body rotation so to achieve this effect we need to know two different things so let's start by getting the x distance now the x distance is equal to we need to know the y distance so two things so let's start by getting the x distance 
Now the x distance is equal to, it's just a variable, x, a variable is just equal to something, x is equal to, we'll set it equal to the, um, the x distance. So what is the x distance? The x distance is equal to the car controller x position minus the car body x position. All right, that gives us the x distance between the car controller and body. So now let's do the y distance. So let's set another variable, just a random variable. It can be whatever you want. It can be that. We're gonna do y because y makes sense because it's y distance. So the y distance is the y position of the car controller minus the y position of the car body. So there we go. We have the x distance and the y distance. So now we're gonna achieve the final effect. So here's how we're gonna do this. JavaScript has a built-in function that converts a slope, which is which is based off the distances, it converts the slope to rotation. So here's what we're going to do. Here's the function. We do math, which is capital M, math dot atan2. So it's atan2, math dot atan2, and that's the function. You're going to put parentheses. Now, this function has two values. It has the x distance, which is set to the variable x, and the y distance, which we made y. So x and y. So now it's going to convert this the distances into rotation. This is cool. But it converts into radian rotation. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Here's how you fix it. You do divided by math pi, which is just the value of pi, divided by pi, and we do times 180. So now that converts it, it from radian rotation to degrees rotation. And After Effects use degrees rotation, so that's why we're making it degree rotation. So there we go. If you don't know what all that means, just type this. Alright, so we got something going on here. But as you can see, it's spinning the opposite direction. Alright, so basically we just do times negative 1. So times negative 1. That's going to make it spin the right direction. But then you see it's offset at 90 degrees. So we'll hit minus 90, which means minus 90 degrees. Alright, so there we go. It's functioning perfectly. There we go. So now what we need to do is create a floor. So we hit control Y and create a solid. And we'll call this floor. Alright, so now we'll go to the anchor point and make the anchor point at the top of the floor. So we'll go to the Y hit zero. Then I'll make the anchor point at the top of the floor. Now in the car controller, we'll create a slider that controls the height of the floor. So we'll call this floor height. Now we'll attach the floor position to that slider. So we'll go to the we'll separate the dimensions and we'll add an expression to the Y position and then we'll attach it to the floor height. There we go. So now the slider controls the floor height. All right, but there's a problem. We want the floor to start from the ground and go up. But instead, at zero, it's at the top, and then it comes down. So it's an easy way to fix this. We'll just add an expression to the floor height. And then we'll start from the bottom, which is 720. That's the, that's the height of the composition. So now it's at the very bottom. And then we'll subtract the value. So now when we, when we subtract the value, it's going to move upward because negative values move upward, positive move down. So it's going to make sense. So now if we choose the value to be like 100, it's going to move 100 above the ground. All right, so that makes sense. So now let's connect the car body to the height of the floor. So we'll add an expression to the body position, alternate click the stopwatch, and then we'll attach it to the floor height. But there's a little problem here. You can see the wheel is below the floor, and that's because the anchor point of the body is right there and the anchor point is moving to the height of the floor so we just gotta subtract the value to make it move upward so we've got to subtract the radius of the wheel so here in the wheel rotation we know that the circumference of the wheel is 754 so we just open up our calculator paste that in then we'll divide by pi and then we divide that by 2 to find the radius alright so this is a radius 120 minus 120 there we go so that's looking good it's functioning very nicely so now the problem is when we move the car controller below the floor, the car follows it, and we don't want the car to go below the floor. So let's go to the body rotation, because the rotation is the problem. It rotates too far. So in English terms, here's what we're going to program. If the null object goes below the floor, tell the, the car to stop rotating. All right, so that's what we're going to code. If the car controller goes below the floor, then tell the car body to stop rotating. So let's go ahead and do that. And here's how you write it. If this happens, the case is written in parentheses, if that happens, do this action. The action is inside curly brackets. So the case is in parentheses and the, and the action is in curly brackets. So let's say, you know, hey, if the car controller, so let's grab the car controller, Y position. If the car controller Y position 
is greater than or below is, is below the floor height then we'll tell the rotation of this body to be zero all right and then we'll say else meaning if that's not the case then we'll do another action which is around curly brackets then we'll tell it to be this rotation so we'll copy this rotation right here which is what we previously set if it's above the floor then just do what it normally does so we'll paste the code we had before in the else action so basically this code is doing what we told it to do we said if this null object goes below the floor that means right here goes below the floor then stop rotating be at zero but we need, we want it to stop rotating before it goes below the floor so we'll do we gotta find the radius of the wheel so here we found that the radius of the wheel was 120 so we'll do if the car controller plus 120 plus the radius is below the floor then then it'll work so basically we're saying if the car controller plus 120 is below the floor then it'll stop rotating so that works perfectly so guys we are basically done this is working really nicely the wheels are turning doesn't go below the ground I'm also just gonna lock that floor so we can't move it um, so yeah this is looking really good um, you can go ahead and st start styling stuff a little bit I'll try to do this really quickly because we're running out of time I'm gonna hit pre-compose and do leave all attributes in this composition so it doesn't change anything so hit OK now I can go in here and start styling stuff alright so the coolest part is when we add reflections so I'll show you how to add reflections real quick alright so if we go to the if we add just you know a background picture just scale it up a lot um, here's what we're gonna do we gotta create a mat to show where the reflections need to be so we'll duplicate the car layer and then we'll go to um, change color and change color is a good um, tool for making mats so we'll choose you know what colors do we want the, the reflections to exist in I'll choose that color right there I think that's a good color and then I'll go to color correction mask alright so here we can see where the reflections are going to exist wherever it's, there's white is where the reflections are going to exist so I'll go to using chroma and then I'll turn that down and then just turn the uh, turn the softness up a little bit hold control so it does really precise so about I want about, about that much for reflections right, right there and then so I have my mat now so that's good and then we can like you know do remove grain to get rid of some of that uh, that grain there and go to final output okay this is looking good so now we have our mat and now what we need to do is um, toggle switches till we see track mat right here and put the put the mat above the background and then we we'll hit luma mat and so basically it tells the the reflection to only exist where there's bright spots on the car so there we go so now the background is only existing where we chose it to be so now we gotta make this look good let's do like screen um, to make the reflections look better and then we'll do curves to you know adjust the brightness of this reflection turn it down a little bit and then we'll just add a little fast blur add a little fast blur to make it look a little better so we'll do like five pixels alright so that looks good there we go we have our nice reflection and we can also just you know change the color of the entire car so we'll go to hue and saturation and then we can just rotate the hue so there we go whatever color we want whatever we'll go blue blue is just the bomb there we go that looks good and then we need to make the uh, reflections move dynamically with the rest of the body so here the reflections are not moving and we can easily do this check this out we've got to see both compositions at the same time so we'll move this composition down here and uh, here's what we'll do we'll go to the background position we'll separate the dimensions and basically the X position of the, the reflection needs to change so let's go to our main comp up here and then we'll up, open up the uh, position for the car controller and then we'll attach the background X position to the car controller X position doesn't matter if it's in a different composition everything works the same but we want it to move the reflections to move the opposite way of the car controller so we we'll hit times negative one and that's gonna make it move the opposite direction there we go so now when we move this car controller the reflections are gonna dynamically move so that's, that's an awesome technique and also I'll just move this back up here so there we go guys we got a nice car with a uh, nice reflections and everything this is really nice complete dynamic rig this is sweet hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you learned a lot about expressions how you can make dynamic rigs like this it's really sweet and we can really just easily animate this to be really nice and also if you don't want that front wheel to turn when it's off the ground you can just do the same technique we use with the it with the if statement you just say hey if the car controller is above the ground tell the wheel rotation to be zero the same technique we used before with the if statement and that's a good challenge you know see if you can make the front wheel not rotate when it's off the ground it's a good challenge to see if you really learn the material so if you have learned something from this tutorial please consider subscribing and 
comment any of your questions. I'll see you in the next video.